Filipinos, where did they come from? Was it a forgotten empire hidden by time? A desert island civilization lost in the sea? Or maybe something even deeper? Modern science has cracked open a mystery once left to myths and legends. And the key? It's not found in dusty old books or ancient scrolls. It's in the blood. In recent years, scientists have traced the genetic blueprint of the Filipino people, and what they found paints a story more fascinating than fiction. A story of ocean-crossing pioneers, isolated tribes older than pyramids, and waves of migration that shaped not just the Philippines, but much of Southeast Asia. And yet, this story is rarely told. Many Filipinos don't even know the full truth about their origins. So who were the first Filipinos? Where did they come from? And how did the islands become a melting pot of ancient lineages? If you've ever wondered about your roots, or just love uncovering hidden history, stay with us. Because what you're about to hear isn't just a story of genes. It's a story of survival, adventure, and the power of human connection across time. This is the genetic origin of the Filipinos, according to science. Let's rewind the clock way back. Not hundreds, but tens of thousands of years. Homo sapiens, our species, first appeared in Africa. Then, around 60,000 to 70,000 years ago, a brave few left the continent. They walked, they sailed, they survived. These early humans spread across Asia using ancient land bridges and coastal paths. Southeast Asia, where the Philippines sits, became one of the final frontiers of that epic journey. But this wasn't a one-time event. Scientists have discovered that multiple waves of people came through Southeast Asia at different times. These are called migration waves. One early wave included the ancestors of the Austroasiatic and Austro-Melanesian peoples, groups with deep roots across mainland Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Then came a powerful new migration, the Austronesians. This group changed everything. About 4,000 to 5,000 years ago, Austronesians left southern China and Taiwan, sailing on outrigger canoes. They brought with them new languages, farming skills, and seafaring genius. They didn't just land in the Philippines. They spread to Indonesia, Malaysia, Polynesia, and even Madagascar. Today, millions of people across the Pacific and Indian Oceans speak related Austronesian languages, including Tagalog, Cebuano, and Ilocano. But before these later arrivals, someone else was already there, long before the Austronesians people who had been living in the islands for tens of thousands of years. Who were they? Let's meet the Philippines' first known settlers, people whose DNA still lives on in modern Filipinos today. Before the Great Migrations, before the Spanish galleons or even the Austronesian boats, there were the Negritos. The Negritos are considered the earliest known inhabitants of the Philippines, arriving over 40,000 years ago. That's long before rice farming, long before the first written language. They are believed to be part of the first wave of modern humans who left Africa and traveled through South Asia. Over time, some groups settled in the Philippines, isolated by geography, but resilient through generations. Genetic studies show that the Negritos are closely related to the Papuans of New Guinea and the Andaman Islanders in the Indian Ocean. These groups share distinct features, darker skin, tightly curled hair, and a unique genetic profile found nowhere else. But here's what's truly fascinating. Even today, traces of Negrito DNA are still found in many Filipinos, especially those from Luzon's Eta and Agta groups, as well as other mountain and forest communities. They lived as hunter-gatherers, deeply in tune with the land, long before agriculture arrived. Their cultures were rich in oral tradition, survival knowledge, and deep respect for nature. Some scientists believe their languages were the first spoken in the archipelago, though many of these have vanished or blended with Austronesian tongues. Though their numbers are smaller today, their legacy is immense. The Negritos are not just relics of the past. They are living proof that the story of the Filipino people began much earlier than most of us realize, and their blood still flows in the veins of millions. Fast forward to about 4,000 to 5,000 years ago, a new wave of settlers began arriving in the Philippines, and they didn't come by accident. These were the Austronesians, Expert sailors, farmers, and community builders, their journey began from what is now Taiwan. Equipped with outrigger canoes and sky-reading navigation skills, they sailed south into the Philippines and beyond. These Austronesians weren't just travelers. They brought agriculture, allowing communities to grow their own food. They introduced pottery, weaving, and more complex social structures. But one of their greatest contributions? Language. 
Almost all the languages spoken in the Philippines today, Tagalog, Cebuano, Ilocano, Bicolano, trace their roots to Austronesian origins, and DNA proves it. Modern genetic studies show that the majority of lowland Filipinos carry strong Austronesian ancestry. In fact, these genes stretch far, uniting people from Indonesia, Malaysia, Hawaii, Madagascar, and even New Zealand. They're all part of the same Austronesian family tree. The legacy of the Austronesians is seen in the Filipino love of the sea, in community traditions, and even in everyday words. But this migration didn't erase the past. Instead, the Austronesians blended with the Negrito populations already living in the islands, creating a new, richly mixed ancestry. The Philippines became a melting pot of old and new, and the journey wasn't over yet. Because after the Austronesians came a powerful new force, one that arrived not with canoes but with crosses and cannons. Let's talk about the Spanish. In 1521, Ferdinand Magellan arrived in the Philippines. What followed was over three centuries of Spanish colonization, a period that would reshape Filipino identity forever. But did it change the Filipino DNA? The answer is, a little, but not as much as you might think. While Spain ruled the Philippines for more than 300 years, the number of Spaniards who actually settled and intermarried with locals was relatively small. Still, genetic tests show that in some areas, especially in urban centers like Manila or Cebu, there are traces of European DNA. These are mostly Y chromosome markers, meaning they came from Spanish men who had children with local women. But here's a common misconception. Having a Spanish surname doesn't mean you have Spanish blood. In 1849, Governor General Narciso Claveria issued a decree that required Filipinos to adopt standardized Spanish surnames. It was mostly for administrative purposes, creating a catalog of family names to manage taxes and census records. So today, Many Filipinos have surnames like Garcia, Reyes, or Cruz, but genetically, they may have zero European ancestry. Still, Spanish influence changed many aspects of Filipino life, religion, architecture, food, and yes, language. But genetically, the impact was relatively light compared to the deep roots from the Negritos and Austronesians. And while Spain left its mark, the Philippines remained open to other influences, especially from the East. Let's look at how centuries of trade brought Chinese and other Asian DNA into the mix. The Philippines has always been a land of trade, and long before European ships arrived, there were Chinese junks in its harbors. For over a thousand years, Chinese merchants traveled to the islands to trade silk, ceramics, and spices. Some of them stayed. They married local women. They started families, and with them, they passed down more than goods. They passed on their genes. Today, many Filipinos, especially in coastal cities, carry Han Chinese DNA. This is most visible in Tinoy communities, who maintain strong Chinese traditions alongside their Filipino identity. But China wasn't the only influence. Indian traders, Arab missionaries, and even Japanese migrants also came to the Philippines over the centuries. Their genetic footprint is smaller, but still present, especially in places like Mindanao, Zamboanga, and Sulu, where Islam and trade flourished before Spanish colonization. You'll find traces of Indian DNA among some Lumid tribes and Arab ancestry among Muslim Filipinos, particularly those with surnames like Ali, Hassan, or Jafar. These migrations didn't just bring genes. They brought beliefs, customs, clothing, and even cuisine. The Philippines became a true crossroads, where East meets West and Ancient meets Modern. But it all comes together in the Filipino identity we know today. Not one bloodline, not one language but a tapestry of migrations, woven together over tens of thousands of years. And it gets even more interesting when we zoom in on regional genetics across the islands. It's easy to say Filipinos are one people, but dig deeper, literally into their DNA, and you'll find something fascinating. There's no single Filipino race. Instead, the Philippines is home to dozens of ethnic groups, each with its own unique genetic signature. Take the Igorots of the Cordillera Mountains. Their DNA shows less Austronesian influence and more ancient genetic markers, possibly linked to early settlers like the Negritos. Scientists believe they remained relatively isolated in the highlands, preserving genes that may date back thousands of years. Now contrast that with Tagalogs or Visayans. These lowland groups have strong Austronesian ancestry, with a blend of influences from Chinese, Malay, and even Spanish origins. In the south, the Moro communities in Mindanao carry markers not often seen in northern Filipinos, reflecting Arab and Malay ancestry, 
thanks to centuries of Islamic trade and cultural exchange. Even the Ilocanos, Bicolanos, Capampangans, and Lumads, each group tells a slightly different genetic story. Language, culture, and geography all played a role in shaping their DNA. This is why two Filipinos might look totally different, or share only a few cultural traits, yet still belong to the same nation. The Philippines isn't a single thread. It's a woven fabric of migrations, marriages, and memories. And just when scientists thought they understood it all, DNA revealed even more surprising twists. Let's explore the newest findings, some of which are rewriting the textbooks. Thanks to modern tools like 23andMe, Ancestry DNA, and the Genographic Project, ordinary Filipinos have started unlocking secrets hidden in their genes. And what they're finding? It's nothing short of amazing. Some Filipinos, especially from eastern and southern islands, carry markers linked to ancient Polynesians and Melanesians. That means their ancestors may have traveled even farther than Taiwan, possibly coming from Papua New Guinea or the remote corners of the Pacific Islands. This has led to fierce debate among scientists. For years, the accepted theory was the out-of-Taiwan model, which said Austronesians came directly from Taiwan and spread south. But a new idea is gaining attention. The out-of-Sunderland theory. This theory suggests that ancient humans may have already been living in island Southeast Asia long before Austronesians arrived. Some researchers even propose that parts of Indonesia, Borneo, and the Philippines were once connected by land, and that people migrated from there not just from Taiwan. So, what's the truth? It might be both. The Filipino genome is so complex that it likely contains multiple layers of ancestry, from early islanders, Austronesians, Negritos, traders, and colonizers. And that's the point. The story of Filipino origins isn't a straight line. It's a braided river, fed by many streams. And each new DNA study uncovers more twists and turns. Now let's bring it all home. So, where did the Filipinos come from? The answer isn't one place or one people. It's a journey. A journey that began with ancient wanderers crossing from Africa to Asia. That continued with seafaring Austronesians bringing new life to the islands. That blended with trade, colonization, and centuries of cultural exchange. Today, the Filipino people are one of the most genetically diverse populations in Asia. And that diversity is a strength. It tells a story of survival, of adaptation, of identity forged by both nature and history. Filipinos aren't defined by a single bloodline, but by a shared spirit, resilient, warm, and deeply rooted. Whether you're from Luzon or Mindanao, have a Spanish surname or Chinese ancestry, carry Negrito genes or Polynesian traces, you are part of a story thousands of years in the making, and science is only just beginning to uncover the full picture. If you found this journey fascinating, hit subscribe, and join us as we continue to explore the truths that history books often leave out. Because the past isn't just behind us, it's inside us, and it's time we understood it.